Okay, so there have been two videos put out in the last week or so uh, by a couple of fairly prominent prophecy teacher guys, uh, both speaking about Flat Earth and the issue of hybrid dimensions and all this, which I've talked about uh, in the past. So I'm going to play these two clips and then talk more about it on the other side. And uh, this is, uh, well, I'm just going to jump right into it. It says, Chuck, what is your perspective on the flat earth theory? Well, it's flat. The, 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 the world is clearly flat. Now, the problem with that. <laughs> yeah, I love tell the, us the problem because you're going to get us I want to leave here. it there because that way people can misquote me all over the place. <laughs> the term flat is used in the mathematical sense that it has mathematical properties. It's flat in that sense. Right. And so that gets into a whole description beyond our little review here. Uh, but uh, that the, uh, the, the flat earth, when people think of the flat earth, they think of the people that, you know, I, I love that painting, which has the ship going off the edge, right. and the caption says, I told you so, you know. <laughs> so, so that's not what we're talking about. No, we're not talking no, about a three-dimensional no. flat earth. Yes, and, and that, that it, it's flat in a, in a sense of its mathematical properties not in the sense of its topology in the usual right. sense, yeah. Well, in this sense also, you did a, um, uh, a teaching called the holographic universe, which, which then says actually everything is synthetic. I mean, would that yeah. also be an element to this flat earth oh, absolutely. idea? If you're, gonna, if you're gonna go down this path, you get, you're going to get right into the nature of reality, the boundaries of our reality. Uh, that, uh, no, that's, that's, that addresses the issue that it's more complex and people that try to to give a, give a three-dimensional answer to a hyper-dimensional issue, uh, they're really stepping on a minefield, aren't they? They're really, they're really going into an area that they but really... But I would encourage them to do that, though. I think going down that path is useful. I think we need to understand what we mean by the fact that the universe may be holographic. Yes. And, uh... All right, so here's the first thing I want to point out. The time-traveling device on this show is an eyeball. And I just watched a video by D13 Watchman. Uh, I know he's been around. I just haven't really gotten to all of the videos he's published. And he published a video called The Biggest Secret Ever Kept in History Revealed. And it was a couple months ago when he did so. Now, I don't necessarily agree with everything he talks about in this video, but in it, he proposes the idea that the flat earth, spherical earth, and hollow earth are all one in the same. And this is something that really resonated with me because it is something that I've been thinking about as a possibility for a while now, since the flat earth discussion came about Now, not necessarily the hollow earth, that part of it, I didn't tie in. But if you ask Josh Peck early on, I talked to him about how it's possible that the flat earth and the spherical earth are one in the same because of extra dimensional properties. And one of the examples that really made me think about this was the idea of flatland, an illustration that's used to explain multiple dimensions. If you don't know what flatland is, basically it's a two-dimensional world, you know, length and width only. If a sphere goes through flatland, all the people of flatland will see is a point turn into a circle and then morph back into a point. They wouldn't see the sphere altogether, and it would be difficult to convince those in flatland that there is this other world that is extra-dimensional. And so when he was talking about this, connection point that perhaps the flat earth, the sphere earth, and the hollow earth are all one in the same. Dimensionally speaking, I totally agreed, and that's kind of what I've been thinking for a while now. And just to comment here, I don't think that negates the flat earth psyop. And what I mean by that is I do think that there is an intentional disinformation campaign about flat earth and to create the controversy online and to make it hostile, to make it divisive, but that's an idea I'll flesh out another time. Okay, so Chuck Missler just uh, put out this video uh, talking about the flat earth and this issue of uh, the earth being flat, but <laughs> in this sort of tongue-in-cheek way of only being in, in a mathematical sense, in a dimensional sense. And um, he's actually he actually wrote about this last year, uh, probably as, as long as a year ago. Um, he, he wrote an article about this on his uh, website, so... You know, so we didn't just come out with this yesterday, but um, yeah, it's it's interesting in that it's uh, trying to kind of affirm the flat Earth, but in a way, it's it's something totally different. And it gets into the whole um, holographic universe idea, which is kind of interesting too. When you now hearing this um, 
uh, announcement by Gons, which I was really looking forward to hearing. And um, I was really uh, surprised and, and pretty pleased, actually, to hear him mention the, the video by D13 Watchmen, um, talking about the combination of spherical Earth, flat Earth, and hollow Earth, and how, um, you know, this idea is really resonating with me. And uh, to be honest, no, that, that's really encouraging to me. I'm actually, um, I'm actually excited to hear him... Um, at least exploring it um, on that sort of level. But there's a lot that could be said about this still, and uh, I'm going to have to try and be very careful with, with how I respond because yeah, there's just a lot of angles that I think provide opportunities for misunderstanding, and um, I think there's already been quite a bit of that, I think, with, with guns, and I don't fully understand a, a lot of um, what has factored into his appraisal of the situation. I know he's been bombarded with it for <laughs> the past year, ever since he ever since he interviewed Mark Sargent, which is where I actually was first first introduced to Flat Earth, by the way. But in but in some ways I've as encouraging as I find it, I I will admit that I I have to say that this idea of you know the, the hyperdimensional aspects to the cosmos and um, and all that is obviously well, on the one hand, well, it's something I've been exploring and talking about a great deal myself. Ever ever since I started hearing about Flat Earth, I too was Im immediately thinking about a lot of the stuff that Josh Peck uh, talks about. Um, I've made a few videos about that a long time ago, which probably a lot of people have not seen. But I, I do I do think we have to be careful here. It's, it's interesting because, you know, back when I first was exposed to the Flat Earth idea, you know, I, I too thought it was kind of interesting or maybe a little bit just kind of a fun conspiratorial, you know, romp or whatever, you know, where I thought, well, maybe there's a nugget of truth truth to this somewhere. And, you know, obviously not in the literal sense, right? I mean, because come on, the, the earth itself is not flat. I mean, that's ridiculous. But, you know, I, I very early on was kind of gripped by this idea that the flat earth was maybe more of allegorically true, kind of the way that that Missler and, and now Gons and um, I think uh, several other people are, are kind of kicking around in terms of it just being a, a way of understanding the dimensional, you know, levels to the universe and uh, like maybe the firmament is way of kind of describing this dimensional barrier, dimensional uh, veil. Um, and I actually do still think of the firmament that way. However, you know, what I eventually came face to face with was in terms of having to come back and take a more serious look at flat earth was things like the the simple question of curvature which still after a year of of seeing guns being you know pressed on this this question of flat earth and having tons of his viewers and uh, you know brothers and sisters in christ coming to him it, it, it's like the, the whole question of curvature just gets ignored and then i think you know the other the other main point that by guys like Gons or Chuck Missler too is just um, the uh, the question of a truly uh, biblical, uh, a literal biblical interpretation um, when it comes to all these verses that talk about you know whether it's the creation itself in Genesis or throughout the Bible where it talks about the pillars and the edges or what's going on with the stars and the angels and all these things that we talk about right. Um, you know that stuff is just it's just ignored and so that's basically why i feel like if you know we have to keep hammering away at those two things in terms of what the bible says about all these cosmological as aspects and two just the simple issue of curvature because like we all know it's just so easily gets the conversation gets pushed to all the the celestial questions you know whether it's about the south pole stars or planets or you know is nasa really lying about everything or are they just lying you know are they lying to cover up the earth or are they lying to cover up aliens or you know all this kind of stuff um you know you just get off on all these these wild rabbit trails and they're they're perfectly good conversations to have but when you're ignoring the question of curvature like is the earth literally flat <laughs> Um, you're missing like the biggest, the biggest and most fundamental piece, and like you shouldn't get into all those other ones until you you stop and spend a while looking at the issue of curvature. Um, so it just it 
drives me nuts. That's st I'm still waiting to hear so many of these people even, you know, either light refraction is a legitimate thing which effectively negates and debunks all the evidence that is being compiled by people out there, um, you know, doing curvature tests using using cameras over bodies of water, measuring distances, measuring, you know, what the expected curvature should be. I mean, these have been, this is being done all over the place. Um, and all these, all these people, whether they're, you know, Bible prophecy guys or otherwise, they, they want to talk about everything else except for things like that. So this, so to me, in some ways, even though obviously I'm very... I very much agree with the whole hyperdimensionality aspect of creation, specifically when it comes to the heavens. But this idea of <laughs> that flat Earth is true in the sense that, you know, and then trying to appeal to the whole flatland analogy, uh, it's it sounds good, I, I think, you know. But really, if you if you flesh it out, it doesn't. It, no, it's, it's, to me, I have to say, in some ways, it feels like it might be more a case of um, a guy like Gons or, or many other, other people who are in positions like that where they, you know, they're, they're doing what they're doing full time and connected to a lot of other researchers and, um, you know, ministries with actual budgets and, and, you know, it's, let's, let's face it, when you're, people who are in that position where they're doing what they're doing in a full-time capacity, whether they're writing books or giving lectures or making documentaries or whatever, um, they are feeling pressures that, you know, us quote-unquote regular people who just make videos and, or, you know, write articles or whatever, you know, we, we don't have to worry about losing, losing support or losing funding or losing, you know, there's no financial aspect to it at all. So it's very freeing. Um, so that anyways, so this whole idea of flatland being, well, that's like, this is really a, the true biblical way of explaining, you know, of affirming and explaining what the flat earth is. I would think it wouldn't even really need much explanation to uh, <laughs> to to dispel, uh, in the sense that obviously, you and I and everything else in the world are not two dimensional beings. We live in a three dimensional reality. Um, so the flat Earth is not the same thing as the flat land, um, you know, word picture or analogy. Um, the flat Earth is still a three dimensional construct. It is the question of for me it really boils down it's not even so much that it, it's so important that the earth is affirmed to to be flat and this is the, the crazy thing I think that um, a lot of people have a hard time with but for me what, what really I think bothers me at this point is when I get a sense is that people are trying to find ways of kind of affirm the flat earth or affirm a piece of it or or you know kind of navigate their way kind of like wanting to have their cake and eat it too when i think maybe a lot of what it boils down to is this that at the end of the day you're still afraid to even entertain the idea that the the ground the water level <laughs> really is flat because of the ridicule that will come with it because of the consequences to your ministry or to your brand or to your whatever um this is just a reality that we all you know it's the elephant the elephant in the room that we all that was there so for me that's one of the biggest issues is just not being too afraid to really consider consider things because obviously in in the flat I mean, there's so much material that has been put out now in the last year to where you know, people could be seriously kicking around ideas of ships falling off, like in Chuck Missler talking about ships falling off the edge, or or somebody like Gans who, there's no excuse to not look into all the basics of, to get past all the ideas of divisiveness or being confused by, you know, various flat earth models or concepts that are coming from non-Christian um, individuals. Uh, you know, there's just no excuse for that.